My name's Starsky and welcome to From The Studio on Clubbing TV. And today I'm gonna to be taking a look at three really good, high quality, but budget mono synths. I've got the Artoria Mini Brute, the, the Upside Down Mini Korg Monologue, and the Base Station 2. And this isn't meant to be a, a sort of shootout between them, it's just a look at the different sort of functions and the different things you get from good quality value synths. Uh, and each of these comes in used at well under 300 euros. So let's start by looking at the main differences between them. Well, the first and most obvious difference, I think, is that this is a lot smaller, the Korg monologue's a lot smaller, and that's because it's got these mini keys. And these keys I can span between an F and a C. Whereas on this, I can get between an F and an A. So they're a lot smaller. If you do play and you do solo in and, you, and you've learned piano, you might find them a little bit difficult to use and you might get your fingers in a bit of a muddle every now and then. But if you're not worried about soloing, they're fine. They're the same as you get on the, the Korg Odyssey or the Mini Korg Odyssey and the Korg MS-20 Mini, um, which are both really <laughs> expensive and really high quality synths. And, and I've got them both. Uh, the keys don't annoy me too much, but I'd rather have bigger ones. And the other thing that jumps out when you're looking at them is that the Artoria doesn't have any sort of LED or any screen. And that's because nothing is digitally controlled on this. Everything is what you see is what you get. On these two, we've got a digital screen on the, on the base station, so as you tweak a value, you might be able to see there, it's changing the, on this, it's actually changing the course tuning of oscillator one, let's get it back to zero. And on this, we've got a similar screen. Well, this is LEDs and this is like a really high res screen, this is a really nice little thing. Let's get that back to zero. But what that means is that as these are digitally controlled, it means you can save patches. They both come with a librarian from the manufacturer and they've both got third party editors. The base station you can actually get a free editor for, it's, it's browser based, so just go to the website. And someone's created one for the monologue, which is five euros 90, so that's, that's virtually free. But the librarians with each of them are free and there's free patch banks and you can buy patch banks, that sort of thing. Whereas this, you know, if you wanna save a patch, take a photo. So let's move on to the sounds now and how each of them make different tones using different types of analog architecture. These three are all analog monosynths, which means they can't sound like this. They also can't sound like this. And they definitely can't sound like this. They make one sound at a time and that sound is made by voltages running through all sorts of components which makes a nice big fat juicy analogue sound. And they've all got the basic analogue waveforms which is a sawtooth, a square and a triangle. We've got a sawtooth, a triangle and a square and here we've got a sign, a triangle, a sawtooth and a square. The Mini Brute and the Monologue have both got little secret weapons up the, up the sleeve and that's this wave shaping ability they have. So on the Mini Brute, have a Sawtooth. And that's what they call an Ultra Saw. Which sounds a bit like two oscillators, doesn't it? And the triangle on this has a thing called a Metalizer. So from a really boring triangle sound, with not many harmonics, to... Oh, that's really lively, isn't it? This has got something similar. You have a wave-shaped knob here. So if we go into the sawtooth... And on the triangle... So although they're both wave-shaping, this sounds a little bit richer compared to this? Or does that sound harsher and nastier? It depends which way you look at it, but the different, definitely different sort of tones out of Markman. The base station doesn't have any wave shaping abilities, but it has a separate sub. So we've got oscillator one, oscillator two. 
tune that a bit better. Two oscillators and then a sub. If we go back here, this has got a sub which can be a square or a, a sine. Turn it up. And that can be one or two octaves below the main oscillator. Gives lots of beef that to a bass tone. This has got one or two octaves below and it's got a sine, a pulse or a square. So we've got... So loads of things you can do, loads of different changes in tone. But if you've got two oscillators like you have on the on the monologue and the bass station, you can have sounds where you've got more than one pitch. So, so you can do Mario Kart style sounds. But uh, you can't do that on the on the mini brute because it's only got the single oscillator. And if you've got two oscillators, you can use functions that depend on the interaction of the two oscillators, like, like sync and ring mod. So sync gives you this sort of sound. And that's where oscillator two gets resynced to the pitch of oscillator one, no matter what pitch you've got oscillator two on. I know I'm going on a bit and that's a bit complicated, so it's probably easiest to show you with this excellent and high tech graph I've drawn. But what's most important is that it sounds good. Take that off. And that's a really sort of famous um, synthesizer sound, as is ring mod, which brings in some really weird harmonics. And ring mod's really good for doing sort of bell-like tones and in harmonic stuff. But it can really dirty up a bass line as well. You know, you can get really odd sounding tones from it. This can't do that, but this can. We can bring in ring mod on the bass station using the mixer. So we go down to this ring mod here. And if we change the pitch of oscillator two, it's really difficult to predict what you're gonna get. So you just have to sort of tweak it and play with it until you find something nice. So that's sort of fattening up that tone, isn't it? Take that out. Completely different sound, so really nice to have. This does sync as well, but as I say, this can't because it's only got the single oscillator. So every other synth I've ever heard of, or every other oscillator, a sub oscillator is exactly one octave or two octaves below the pitch of oscillator one. It's, it's how it's created, it's taken from oscillator one. But on this, they've managed to decouple it so that you can independently tune it, which effectively makes it into a three oscillator synth. So you can do stuff like this. That's three different pitches. One, the C, and an E, and a G. This can't do that, and this obviously can't do that. And on my YouTube channel, I've done a comparison of this and the Sub 37. The Sub 37, the Moog Sub 37, is over three, maybe even four times as expensive as this. Uh, and yet, you know, putting them together, there's some really good similarities there and it punches well above its weight. As I'm playing around with the big cutoff frequency knob, let's check out the filters. So the base station's filter, like everything on the base station, is really flexible. It's got low pass, band pass, high pass, and each of those has got a 12 dB or a 24 dB, and then it's got a classic mode and an acid mode. And if you don't know what any of that means, I'll just go through them now just to show you that they each create a different type of tone. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different filters, and that's seven different types of tones. A low pass takes out the high frequencies and leaves in the low frequencies. And we're used to hearing that sort of sound. A high pass takes out the low. Let's maybe put it on the high pass. And a band pass takes out some low and some high, so you'll end up with a, with a band in the middle, a band that passes through. So you get a really thin tone, and this switch here that changes between 24 and 12 dB, that just changes the character of the filter, uh, changes how extreme the filter sound is, so 12's a bit softer, and 24's a bit harsher, or a bit more extreme. 
So moving on to the monologue now, it seems really sort of a little bit pathetic that it's only got a single low pass filter, but let's play it. And what you'll notice is that's a really, really nice sounding filter. Now Korg made the MS-20 and that's famous for having one of the nicest, dirtiest, grittiest filters on the planet. So you can see the heritage there, can't you? Gets really dirty and really nasty. And the Mini Brute's got a multi-mode filter as well. It's not quite as flexible as the base stations, but it's got low pass, band pass, high pass and a notch, and a notch is where you take out the middle frequencies. Let's have a listen to that. So let's now take a look at some of their extra functions like the arpeggiators and the sequences. On the Mini Brute, it's a really simple one. Um, this came with an arpeggiator when it first came out, but they brought the Mini Brute S out, and the Mini Brute S had a step sequencer, and you can interchange them. You just upload a different operating system to change from arpeggiator to step sequencer. On the bass station, it's quite simple as well, but you do have this rhythm section here, this rhythm knob, and that takes out various notes and just changes the rhythm of stuff, so put it on. <laughs> All sorts of weird stuff you can get from that. But the monologue secret weapon is its sequencer. It has four tracks of what it calls motion. So effectively it's like tweaking four knobs as it's playing the sequence. So this patch was created by Aphex Twin. And if we look at what the modulation settings are, it's got cutoff, resonance, decay, and envelope generator initial amount. So it's as if you're tweaking that, that, that and that, all at the same time. So that's the monologue secret weapon, pretty cool it is too. And Aphex Twin had an input in that and he's written some patches, but oddly enough, he's also had some input in the base station 2's Aphex mode, believe it or not. And the Aphex mode is where you have what they call an overlay, uh, but essentially what they have is 25 keys here on the keyboard, and each of those keys has a separate sound. Combine that with the sequence set, you've got yourself a drum machine. But you can also do sort of nice melodic things with it. So which of these is best for you? So as I said at the start, this wasn't a sort of shootout between them which one is best. This is really just, this is the sort of stuff that's available used for under 300 euros. And hopefully by watching this and seeing all the different sort of terminologies and what things mean and how things sound will help you decide which one you like. And obviously these aren't the only three available. There's lots out there. So always do your homework. Make sure you get what, what's, what's best for your setup and the best for the way that you work. And if you enjoyed that and you found that useful, check out Starsky Car on YouTube where I've got a lot more in-depth and technical reviews and comparisons of synths and, and music tech in general. And don't forget you can catch this whenever you like on YouTube on Clubbing TV's From the Studio playlist and I'll try my best if you drop something in the comments to answer it as best I can and if you're genuinely interested in buying a synth like one of these I would highly recommend watching this again on YouTube because there's an awful lot of information we got through there in a really short space of time so I'll see you in the next episode of From the Studio